Hi there, matey. You've washed up on GordonandTheWhale.com. Yeah, ready? Yeah. <laughs> Stop laughing, man. You're going to screw up the thing. Look. It's joggling up and down. That's not my chin. He's directing right now. Okay. Um, hey, what's up? My name's Clark Gregg. I'm the writer, director, and jackass boss character in Choke from Chuck Palahniuk's book, and you're on GordonandTheWhale.com. Excuse me, miss, that mole on your thigh? Yeah. You might want to get that looked at. Melanoma is the most common cancer for women, especially blondes. What's your name? Victor. I'm Terry Daiquiri. It's not my real name. We are not born evil sinners. Our perfect knockoffs of God. The world tells us whether we're heroes or victims, but we can decide for ourselves. My name's Victor. Sometimes the best place to start is at the beginning. What? I am the backbone of colonial America. The tour guide. I'm a historical interpreter. Hi, Victor. How art thou? That's funny. She's an amazing woman, your mother. She's getting worse. She never knows who I am anymore. Who am I today? Some guy named Fred. Oh, you'll never change Fred. So now you want to sleep with your mom's doctor. What time do you get off? You don't have to do that. What? Try to have sex with me. Oh, I really do. Satan, 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 Satan. So originally you were hired to do the screenplay, right? How did you become? I wasn't even hired. It just I was brought the book by someone who thought if I, because I had written this movie, Realized Beneath, it was about to come out. It was a very brief, hot moment as a screenwriter for me. So they brought this book that people weren't going to make, generally, because they considered Fight Club a failure, which I found baffling. Um, you just because of the bizarre mathematics of Hollywood, um, and uh, and they thought if you know maybe if, if he gets interested, we can tie up the book. And I, unfortunately, I got much more interested than they wanted me to, in that I, was, I became obsessed with making the movie and writing and directing it. I didn't know that my ego was going to force me to actually act in it as well. Um, and if they had, they probably, probably would have snapped the camels back. But, you know, I put them in touch with another producer who they knew, who was a good friend of mine, someone who I, you know, had done amazing movies like, you know, House of Yes, and Requiem for a Dream, and Tigerland. And, you know, like a lot of producers kind of say, yeah, yeah, listen, when you're ready to direct, I want to I want to do it. And you, they're just, you can feel the smoke <laughs> going uh, up your tush. And uh, this guy, this guy bought the rights within 48 hours and stuck with me for the four or five years it took to get the script right. Uh, a lot of, you know, obviously a lot of dirty sex things kind of in a, in a humorous way, but... Is there a any lot? A good amount. A lot's relative. Uh, Most people think a lot. To me, it's just uh, a good amount. Well, two scenes. I don't. I, I don't want to ruin it for anyone. But two come to mind. Um, was there anything? Uh, was anal bean would be one. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> Whenever you put That's an anal bean, that's one of the promo items for the film. And we we don't call it anal beans. We call them bookmarks. Okay, so bookmarks <laughs> being one, and um, a poodle being another. We'll say it like yes. that. Um, was there anything, maybe other than that, or not even that, that you thought, there's no way I'm going to get this in the final copy, cut of the film, or I might not even get to film this when they the see The whole movie felt like I don't know how I'm going to be able to shoot this, and a lot of what I tried to do is figure out a way to shoot it with, you know, I thought, you know, later on they can come at me and make me take stuff out, but it's got to be true enough to the kind of what it is to be a sex addict. It's got to have its kind of raw, hard, dark stuff um, in order for it to be funny. The comedy kind of comes as like a relief to that. And so I tried to shoot as much of it as possible. The other tricky part was I didn't want it to be an X or a NC-17 because I wanted a lot of people to see this story. Hell, hell you know, Kyle has got a big following, obviously successful, now successful the Film Fight Club. How intimidating was it for you to, you know, adapt to how It was uh, very no. intimidating. I was a big fan of Fight Club. I mean, from the moment I read the synopsis of Fight Club in a magazine, I went, this is the most brilliant satirist working. He's like Kurt Vonnegut. He's, and, um, and so I kind of, I had one conversation with him at the very beginning where I was like, okay, maybe I'm going to make you want to end this and that'll be okay. But I think this is, at its heart, it's kind of like a punk romantic comedy. And he was like, exactly. Go do that. Don't be too faithful. And I hung up and I was like, fuck. Don't be too faithful. That's it? 
because all I want to do is be faithful. There's so many great lines and so many great scenes. And I mean, understandably, it's a seven-hour movie if you just kind of paste the book into final draft screenwriting software, which is all I was, I was unfortunately, <laughs> that's what I was going to do. And, um, and uh, so I struggled because I thought that was just him being nice or something. So I, I, I made this super everything. It's all the voiceover and everything. It was, it was heinous. <laughs> it was just the worst script that anyone ever read. And um, so nobody read it. And, you know, it's a certain point. It's just an adaptation. You gotta, it's got to be a movie. It's got to start to be a movie. And so I kept real distance from him in a way. I kind of didn't talk to him again. He didn't seem like he wanted to particularly. It wasn't like he was dying to hear from me. But I, 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 I had to get away from his voice. And at a certain point, I kind of had to throw the book in a drawer and just kind of keep rewriting the script, make it more and more a movie. And uh, ironically, that's when it kind of got more and more faithful in terms of it felt like the book, you know? And uh, I sent him a draft of the script, and, and he really liked it. He wanted to show it to some people, and, and he was became a supporter of the thing. And, and then it was also terrifying when I brought him to Sundance, the first time anyone saw the movie. An audience of 800 people, one of those was Chuck. And so as a first time director, having it shown, you also have the writer and the audience, so that was pretty rough. It was very rough. I mean, rough. That's not a I thought I was going to faint. <laughs> I've, I've never been so messed up, nervous in my life. Um, people laughed. You know, it was, I kind of felt like a lot of people had a really strange reaction to the script. You know, at, you know, the actors, a couple of producers, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> this is sick. This is not funny. This is sick. And I thought this is going to be one of those dirty jokes that I love but which sometimes will clear a room with everybody like in horror. And fortunately, people laughed a lot, and Chuck liked it. And from then on, you know, I hope people like it. I hope they go see it. But the fact that he liked it, I'm basically, I'm okay. So you got that, at least. Yeah. If there's anything you can take away from it, Calvin liked it. Yeah. You know, you don't, wanna, you, know, you don't want to take a cool book that I love, that other people love, and fuck it up. If anyone gets mad at me, like, Calvin said he liked it. Chuck likes it. You, know, you can go to hell. All I had to do was answer one simple question. What would Jesus not do? You can't fool people into loving you. Wanna bet? Apparently you're capable of having sex with everyone but me. The fact that some part of you resisted turning this into the usual nothing? I think maybe I'm one I'd like you instead. Maybe you're not so bad after all. No, dude, I am. I really am. Show me all the rules, girl. Hey, you changed your hair. Yeah, because of what you said about blondes getting skin cancer. Good thinking. I just want to belong.